All right, small river night fishing tonight. Looks like I got a smallie on the first cast. Just steady retrieving a Rapala upstream, uh, uh, F9. Uh, just a little guy. Hold him up here. There we go. Been moving around for a while. I think I got another smallie on. On the Rapala. Just been pushing up and down. Doesn't feel huge, but feels better. Yeah, a little bit better. Nothing big though. Hold them up here. Just barely a little better, still a small one. There we go. Switched over to a curly tail jig, brown, 1 16th ounce. Something hit it on the fall. I've just been steady retrieving it. Slowly upstream, it's a good way to rack up a bunch of rock bass if there's a school in the area. This guy isn't a rock bass though. <laughs> if he is, he's a world record. This is probably a, I don't know, walleye or bass. Just got him on four pound test, he's really tugging. Really tugging. Not huge, but he, you know, he feels bigger when you gotta play him like this on this line in this current. Water's really low, but the current's pretty fast for how low it is. Oh man. He's really pulling hard, man. Probably a smallie. A little bass, I think. I'm better than the other ones, but still nothing huge. And that brown curly tail jig there. Probably like a chunky 16 and a half, 17, something like that. up another thing on the curly tail. Looks like a tiny bass. But he's jumping and fighting. A bunch of little smallies. I might go head over to the spillway. Sometimes I slam them here and sometimes I just pick up a few like tonight. But night fishing can be a good way to slam daytime pressured fish in a spot. Sometimes. Other bass. No rock bass. I, I, I've done really poorly for rock bass this August and September. Normally I have at least one night where I slam them. Get like 60, 70, but I've just been picking one up here or there. No big schools. It's weird. Oh, just smally so far. Just another little guy. That's something else on here. Oh, he surfaced, so I don't know what he is. Could be another bass. Tugging pretty hard. That's another smallie. A lot of smallies tonight. A lot of small bass. Tough doing this wading up to your your belly though. I tuck the rod into your waders whenever you get a fish. Sort of jigging it when this guy hit. Yeah, 
know, usually I like to crawl it because that, like, that seems to bring up the best numbers, but if that isn't working, I'll, you know, crawl it at least in this spot on this river this time of year, but if that doesn't work, you gotta start trying other retrieves. If that doesn't work, you move. Or try a different lure. Another smallie. Moving around and fan casting the Rapala. Another bass, I think. Pretty sure I just lost a good fish. It popped on the Rapala. A few casts later, I got this guy. So, you know, sort of fish you set the hook on me, it doesn't budge. Popped. This is just a little guy. Yeah. Small bass, probably you know, around the size of the other better one tonight, but not very big. Yeah, probably a little smaller, 15, 15 and a half. Something right next to me here. Oh, finally got a walleye. I was gonna say, I usually pick up more walleyes. Just a tiny one. Yeah, 12, 13 incher. There we go. Moved over to the spillway, started doing the same thing. Feels like I got a rock bass on. Oh, yeah, nice solid one. Sweet. Probably between nine and nine and a half. Nice, decent rock bass. I switched to a two inch curly tail jig just to be a little bit lighter. Snag less in the rocks. Another rock bass here. Just crawling and twitching it along the bottom. Same as I've been doing all night with the curly tails pretty much. Looks like I'm on a school now though. There's definitely some in here expect that. Yeah, this one's probably like around eight and a half. It's got a hit right next to me here. Pretty close. Uh, maybe a little bit out, like ten feet out. Just fishing along this wall. Sometimes structure really concentrates them. This little two inch orange curly tail jig. Probably another one around nine. Maybe eight and three quarters. This guy feels really small. Oh, no, he has some weight now. Never mind. Not tiny, probably. Yeah, he's as big as the other ones. Maybe bigger. Felt really small at first. That was weird. Sometimes I just give up, though, and don't fight very hard. He's probably like a tall-backed, you know, nine to nine and a half. Right in there. One out of the middle. I switched back to a three inch curly tail because I snagged a two inch and figure if I'm going to snag him, I might as well use a better bait profile. They'll eat a three inch just fine, especially big ones, and that's what I'm hunting for. Hunting for a 15 plus. <laughs> yeah, another, you know, nine or close to nine. Nice colors on them. Getting a lot of hits. Getting a rock bass every other cast, probably. It's a good sign. Means they're stacked up pretty good. This guy, yeah, this guy's a walleye. I was about to say, he feels a little too heavy. Shoot. Better size walleye. Just letting everything go, but that one's definitely a keeper. You know, a keeper sized one, probably 16 to 17. A lot of people hate rock bass, but I love them, just like other panfish. You know, they're pretty much, pretty much like any fish that has a state record. That's a lot of the fun for in fishing for me. That's yeah, definitely the best one of the night so far. Might be double digits. Yeah, that one's probably a solid 10 incher. Maybe even a little more. 
we'll measure them then let them go. Nice rock bass. That last rock bass was 9.9 .9, so it wasn't a big one but he was a solid one. Got another one here. Yeah, smaller guy. Another rock bass. They wiggle like really fast. You can pretty much always tell it's a rock bass when they hit. That's what they do instead of fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's another little guy. I swear this, you know, this thing where you're reeling a jig close to the bottom, just slow, kind of crawl it along the bottom. It's just killer for rock bass. Now, I'm not slamming them tonight, but the days I have slammed them, it was when I was doing this. You get like, I don't know, 60 or 70 before you give up from ex from exhaustion on top of all the other fish. <laughs> One night I got 100 fish and I was so tired I just quit and walked home. They seem pretty scattered, but I think I'm thinning them out of this spot. Now, I'm just going to fish for a few more minutes and then probably go goose hunting. You know, not a not too bad of a night I guess for just fishing for like three hours goofing around good scout trip you know see what's hitting and where all right I'm calling it this is the last one for the night I'll be back some other night to really try and slam them especially in October that's when the big ones come out I guess that's what I've heard from other people. That's when the 14s just start biting like crazy. There's one. All right, came back to the river a couple hours later. What did I catch there? A walleye? Oh, a nice walleye, sweet. Just working a, a decent one, I guess. Seemed a little bigger. <laughs> no water there, but another keeper sized one. Just working this 16th ounce, uh, three inch brown curly tail. There's one. Oop, solid smolly. Sweet. <laughs> that same brown curly tail. Yeah, nothing big, probably 17 or so. You know, just like the one last night pretty much. Except he had a bigger gut. Head on the fall there. Another smallie. I measured that last one before releasing it, just for the heck of it. He was 17.6. Uh, Not very fat though, so it didn't seem like he was that long. Usually I underestimate the skinny ones just a little bit and overestimate the fat ones just a little bit. This one's smaller. Just a small, chunky guy. Just working that same brown curly tail. There we go, there's a fish. Just burning a, a XPS rattle shad. It's 
swimming in a weird way. Might be a walleye. Fast and going down. No, it's a smallie. That's why it feels weird. It's hooked under the chin. Or like on the fin or something. Fin in the face. Yeah, just a little guy. Right after I gave it that pop there. Got something. Peel and drag. Ah. Awesome. This guy's really tugging. <laughs> Waiting for like a pike or a muskie to jump on. That's half the reason I throw on a, a, a rattle bait. This guy's pretty heavy. I'm not saying it's a pike or a muskie. It could be all sorts of crap. It could be a 30 inch sucker that I, that I foul hooked or a carp or all sorts of crazy things. You never know, but. This guy is pretty heavy. <laughs> Don't pop the hook, baby. He's going upstream, too. That's weird. I'd bet on carp, but I think that's the most likely thing. But I've seen big northerns and muskie in here, too, in this pool. Obviously, they're in the river, but in this specific pool, I've seen all, everything just about. <sighs> Come on, baby, stay hooked, stay hooked, stay hooked. It's going shallow. Could be a, could be a big walleye too. Oh, baby, this would be a big one if it was a walleye. He's really, he's pretty heavy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here, to see if I can see him before he pops. Ah, oh, shoot, he's going back now. There's like glare right in front of me. I want to get out of that glare. He hit that rattle shed too. I don't know if I said that. This is a rattle shed fish. Decently heavy. Show yourself. Come on. I want to see what you are before you pop off. A lot. I I have a lot of big fish pop off on me. Gets really annoying. It's doing like tight little circles. Normally when I see something doing tight circles, it's usually a catfish for me. It could be anything, I don't know, but that's what usually does tight circles on me. I'm trying to keep her buttoned up here, but she is not cooperating. Going back down. <laughs> oh yeah. I gotta lose something to drag on her. It's probably only like chest deep. I should just wait out there, grab her, and beat her on the other side or something. I don't know. I'm worried she's gonna pop. It's definitely gonna pop eventually. Pretty much all big fish pop eventually if you fight them long enough. There's so much pressure, it'll just rip out of their skin. Head shaking, weird. Weird, weird, weird. What are you? I don't want to trip either. Give her slack. A lot of rocks here. Oh, please be a giant walleye. Oh man. Most likely not, but <laughs> that would be the dream, man. Look at this. Look at this tension, maxing out the rod. Carp? Yeah, it's a carp, I think. I see a carp. Okay. At least I know what it is now. Probably foul hooked it. I burned it right into its body. The rattle shad. I 
That's why he's probably doing tight circles. He's foul hooked. That's okay though. Yeah. They're six pound tests, so I gotta play them out. feel a lot heavier most fish do pretty much all fish do I guess feel a lot heavier when you foul hook them it's part of the problem here oh, come on baby probably ain't that big are you for a carp Get her close here. She might pop because angle of the line changes and whatever. Starts going more vertical. Might pull the hook in a different way and she might pop. Possible. It happens sometimes, especially if, it, especially if it's foul hooked. Still wouldn't mind getting you ashore here. Definitely want my rattle shad back. Yeah, she's foul hooked on like the fin or gill plate there, I think. If that's, yeah. In the front end there, on the fin. No, 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 no. Get over here. Get in, get in. Yeah, just a small carp. Uh, 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 no, this way, this way. This way. Right on the fin there. Burned it right into its fin. Uh, uh, uh. Gotcha. Try and lift her up here. Oops. All right. Yeah, just a small carp. A little bit lanky. <laughs> 